thread we're going to cut is 55 degree angle with our thread. I've got about a 3 8 tool steel here. All I'm going to do, I'm going to scrape the 55 degree mark on just to give us something that's just to give us a starting point on the grinder. So we've got a mark so we've got somewhere to start from. Start off on a on a rough wheel first. You know when it's getting too hot when you kind of touch it anymore. Right, we've got our tool at 55 degrees. This is only a rough tool for our, our first our first few passes. Once we get the thread running your shape, I'll regrind the tool. But well, that is it, that is at 55 degrees. What I'll do now I'll hone it up on a nice light stool just to give it a good sharp edge. It has got plenty of clearance, plenty of back rake on it. All we do is just follow the follow that angle. Just take the to give it a nice a nice sharp edge. I've also a rule the taking a very sharp point off the end. That looks nice. It's just taking the just taking the rough edges off. You see once we get the thread near the size we'll resharpen the tool. Right I've got the threading tool set dead on centre height. Now if we want to cut the thread just winding the tool in like that you would end up taking a massive cut because you'd be cutting on both sides of the tool. Chances are you'd break the tool. You can get away with it on a, a fine thread, on a small thread, but a big coarse thread like this, you can't do it. So what we do is, we angle the compound slide to half the angle of the thread, which is 22 and a half degrees. And we'll put the cut on with a compound slide, like that. Which means that only cutting on the front edge of the tool, the back edge of the tool merely polishes the thread. Once you've got the thread now you the size, then you can go in and cut on both sides. So we need to set the angle of the compound slide to half the angle of the thread, which is 22 degrees. The way in which it's right is when the angle of the compound slide is the same angle as the side of the tool, because half the tool is 22 and a half degrees. There's no graduations on this compound slide, so all I do is use a protractor. So that's what I took. I took the tool post off so you can maybe see a bit better. So I've got that running parallel with the slide in a square to the job. So that angle there is 22 and a half degrees because that's what this is set at, which is half the 55 degree thread angle. So what we'll do, we'll lock our, lock our slide up with that. It means you'll be putting the cut on with a compound slide and pulling the tool out with a cross slide. I think what I'll do with it being such a short thread, I'll just reverse the layer that I wouldn't bother disengaging the feed screw. I think it's just as quick because the layer's got a the layer's run through an inverter and it can be reversed easily. Right, we'll nip that up. 
next thing is to put the tool in and make sure the tool is set square to the job. It's already on centre height. Right, we've got the tool fitting nicely. Into the little template. And the jig is nice and square against the against the job, so the tool is at the right angle to cut the thread. This is the slow cutting gearbox on the lathe. Uh, we're looking for six thirds of the inch. So six thirds of the inch it tells me I need a 42 stud gear. I need this lever on position here and that one lined up with six. We'll have a look in the back of the gearbox and we'll have to change this stud gear. Right, so all set up, gearbox is set to cut six cents an inch, the change wheels are set right, the tools on centre height, and it's the right, right angle of the job. The compound slide is set at 22 and a half degrees. We'll start the lathe up and engage the feed nuts just to make sure the carriage is run the right way. You'll notice I've got the carriage away from everything so we don't get any disasters. Right, it's going towards the chuck, that's what we want. Well, this lathe has got a thread, a thread dial indicator, but for such a short thread and a coarse thread, I won't use it, I'll just reverse the lathe. First thing we do is we make, we'll get the tool to touch the job, then we'll zero for cross slide. Wind it out to 100, so one full turn. And what we're going to be putting our feet on with our compound slide. That's zeroed as well. So we'll go in, zero, feed on with the compound slide, back out, and it just goes on and on. And start the lathe up, nice and slow at first. Right, we engage our nuts. My nuts are well engaged now, I can assure you. All we do when it drops off the end, stop the lathe, cross side out, one full turn, reverse the lathe, and we're back to the beginning again. Stop it, in one full turn, and we'll put our feet on. What I'll do, I'll measure the I'll measure the pitch. Right, I've got a six thirds of the inch gauge there, and you can see. That's lined up absolutely perfect. A bit more later on. So that's cutting six thirds of the inch. Back to the beginning again. Back in your hundred thou. Little bit of cut. Little bit, little bit of lubricant. It's a thing the inverter you can run. You can run nice and slow. You see, only cut on one side of the tool as well. The chips are forming nicely. Once you get in the procedure, you've got to keep to it, keep doing things the same way. It's very easy to make a mistake, and we don't want any double star threads. Right, so, right, wind in, 100 thou, that's back to where we started from. A little bit of cut, cutting oil, run the rail forwards, it's how slow I can make it go. If it was a big long thread, I would use the. <coughs> if it was a long thread, I would use the thread that indicator and disengage the feed nuts, but it's not, so I'm going to do it this way. Out one full turn, then back. Into zero again. 
a little bit of cut see there it's only cutting on the front half of the tool about that then basically nothing that run out and what you would do you'd refit your faces back to it anyway before you mounted a chuck on it right, we can fairly safely call that done very happy with that <laughs> 